Hi everyone, this is Bobby from Beyond-Games.com and this is my second attempt at recording this. Unfortunately, my camera died as I was recording the unboxing, but uh, that's a transformer. That is a transformer that should work with the initial decab. If you've been watching the channel, you would have seen that uh, I had bought another transformer that I thought matched all the voltages and uh, apparently it didn't. Um, Gonzo on the Arcade Project forums saw the video and uh, messaged me. Uh, so this coming all the way from Puerto Rico. Um, according to him, this came out of a jumbo safari machine. So uh, we're going to try to re-splice the ends on the uh, wires we cut in the last video and uh, see if this works. So uh, this transformer has got to be like 40, 50 pounds. It weighs a metric ton uh, where the other one doesn't weigh anywhere near. So you know there's a lot of, uh, a lot of copper there. So, let's see how this goes. You know, now looking at it compared to the other Transformer, that thing is pathetic looking. <laughs> By comparison. Yeah. Uh, well, that's definitely one of them. Yeah, but we only have two going in. Yeah, because the other one was only two. In fact, you can probably... There's put three on that one. Oh, that might have been actually on the transformer itself, remember? The plug end wasn't the, the right one, so you cut it off. I think that's the one that was on the existing, even on that side. Okay, so I originally we originally cut parts off and saved them, thankfully, <laughs> when we put the uh, power to the cab. And I uh, was looking at the, because we weren't sure where the white, black, and green were going to go. And uh, lo and behold, we found that that's where we need to go. And uh, thankfully, Streets Kings has been in contact with me. I sent him a text message, and he confirmed that the black, white, and green are going to have to go directly into the power uh, line. So we're going to have to do some more splicing. Um, since this uh, particular transformer came from a different cabinet, um, we have to also splice the Molex ends because they are not an exact match. But we know the right two wires. Well, two, yeah, two of them. They match the colors, and we know this is the right transformer. So, uh, fingers crossed. The moment. Well, let's see what happens. So we were looking for the Molex connector to see if we could plug into the one on the transformer, and I just happened to notice. The same colors are sitting right there, with nothing plugged into it. Oh, wait, no, we can't. We can't? See, that's a double. Yeah. Okay. I'll well, just... it's a double green. That might just be double ground? Oh, no, this is... you still use it, because the, the other ones are on the outside. But see, that's the power thing. Yeah. I don't know if this is power or not. Well, it doesn't run into the power supply. It doesn't run into this. Oh, it runs this way. Yeah. Okay, so we're probably not going to plug directly into this wire because according to the power supply, it's at 50 hertz and the transformer is clearly at 60 hertz. So we don't want to starve anything. So we're going to go with the original plan of splicing it into the power cord. Uh, the other thing he's going to do is he's going to put a power... Uh, plug or power switch on this thing because right now when I want to turn it on I have to plug it into the wall and then unplug it so uh, this will take care of that issue as well so um, yeah let's see where it goes
Yeah, I remember how much trouble you had putting in the uh, control panel last time. That ain't going nowhere. Very nice. See what happens. Alrighty, all the splicing and dicing at this point is done. We've matched it as close as we can to the pictures we have and what we've seen. The switch is plugged in and wired in, and we're gonna. Oh, <laughs> must have been in the on position. I thought I smelled something. It might have come through the water core. I definitely heard something when I turned the volume up, so. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, oh. It's still loading, but we're getting a blinking on the audio board. No, no, no. I'm sorry. That's the force feedback. Oh, there is a light on the audio board. Look. Yep. Holy shit. Okay, so no audio so far, but we might need to turn it on on the Naomi side, so I'm not not worried yet. No, you have those other things plugged in. That shouldn't that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so well, the carburetor's not on. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're in a bit of a pickle. I'm pretty sure the power issue is taken care of because both boards are lighting up. If you, you can hear a hum because the volume pot is turned up all the way but we're not getting any sound and when I go into the test mode I turn the speakers on but I get nothing um, I did buy a spare soundboard um, so we're gonna try putting that in and uh, see if that takes care of the issue uh, the force feedback okay small update it looks like the card reader is working uh, it initialized and I heard it make noises it's never done that before on this machine we're still not getting sound, but we did replace the sound board. We don't get sound just yet. Uh, you still get it from the Sega Swirl thing. So, I think I need, well, I'm going to go in the Naomi test right now and tell it to turn the speakers on. So, where we're at now is the uh, sound amp, while it is powering on, we can't get any sound working. Um, it is the new board that's still in there right now. One interesting thing is once we swapped out the old board with the new one, the uh, static from the speakers that I showed earlier uh, goes away. So um, there's that. We matched all the jumpers and stuff, but one interesting part is I looked at the traces on the back of the board, and it might be hard to see here. There's some... something bad happened to this board. It might be hard to see, but around the microcontroller... I assume it's a microcontroller. There's some uh, some nastiness on the traces, so I think this board is shot. Um, I'm pretty sure the force feedback board is fine because um, when it tries to initialize, it doesn't give any failure errors, like if there was a bad voltage or something like that. Um, and behind the steering wheel, you hear some grinding uh, as it tries to kick into gear, so I'm going to have to buy the assembly for that. I found uh, a set, unless I can get one from someone locally, but I'm probably going to have to get it from Yaton. Um, uh, but the positives here are, you know, the card reader works, which if you've been following this entire series, you'll know that that was a pain in the ass and I had pretty much given up on it. Um, got a power switch now so I can power this thing on without having to plug it in every time. That's nice and since it'll have power, it'll just check the memory, not go through a whole systems test every single time, which is nice. Uh, we know that this transformer works because it's powering all these things and, uh, you know, that that's certainly working. So. Uh, a lot of positives here, but uh, I'm going to take some detailed pictures of the sound amp and see if anybody has any suggestions online. Um, if you have any suggestions, please put them below in the comments. Um, 
I'm not sure where else to turn. We've ch tried changing some jumpers and that sort of thing, and we can't get anything to work um, at this point. And this is the only sound amp in, in the cabinet, so it's not like there's another board that should be causing a problem. Um, I'm guessing it's probably a wiring issue, most likely, but we didn't we didn't mess with any of the wiring for the sound amp um, till today, actually. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll see where it goes. Um, otherwise, progress. Um, also on the list is to get a new light housing for the top, so we can put an LED in there because finding original light boxes uh, is kind of pain in the ass. So. Anyway, please comment below, subscribe, all that stuff, and uh, let me know what you think. Thank you.